so I'm black, and um, I'm kind of like the race joke czar in Burlington because, uh, like, I <laughs> no, because uh, whenever somebody makes a race joke, they always like they don't mean to, but they always subconsciously look at me just to make sure it's okay to laugh. So comedians, do you ever have a race joke that you want to that you want to tell? I take five bucks a joke. Um, and it's funny, I didn't realize that I was the race joke czar until, like, even my friends look at me that way. Like, I had a friend in high school who I didn't realize I was, like, an experiment at this time, but he invited me over to his house, and he's like, you like comedy? Let's watch some comedy, right? So we put on Russell Peters, who, if you guys don't know, he's kind of a racial comedian. And the way this room was set up, I was sitting in a chair, and the laptop was here, and we're watching that, and he's on, a, on the chair looking at me watch... Russell Peters. <laughs> and he had a small room and I didn't realize this at first, so I thought that was the most comfortable way. No, it was an experiment. He was like writing, seeing my reaction to different jokes and like make sure it's okay. All right, black man get in the car. Okay, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> White man losing his job. All right, that's funny. That's funny. We can, we can talk about that. Black man getting arrested? No, no, not funny. Not funny. Let's talk about that again. That's, that's not going to be talked about at school. Um, it's funny being black in Vermont because uh, there's, not, there's not many of us, and uh, I feel that you guys have, like, some people have a, a weird uh, 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 prejudice feeling. Not prejudice, because that sounds weird, because that's going to make you guys feel like you're racist, but just un, un, you guys don't really know a lot of black people, so you think that we're all like the ones you see on the news, you know? Like, and on MTV and stuff like that, you know, like me. Like, I'll give an example of this. This one time I was driving down the road with my brother, and I, I were pacing this other car, and I look at this lady, and I say, sup, right? And she looks back at us and goes, eh, and locks the door. <laughs> As we're going down the road, like, like I want her car that much. Like, I want her car that much, and I'm pull some Mission, Mission Impossible shit, and just jump on the Hi! <laughs> But it's weird being black in Vermont, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nice black guy, I'm kind of like a starter black guy, you know? <laughs> if white people just want to get some, more, some black friends first, start finding themselves like a nice Urkel type black guy, you know? Collect two Urkels, then you can move on to one Mike Thomas. <laughs> Collect two or three Mike Thomases, and you can move on to one, like, you know, Kimbo Slice type guy. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan, or um, 1980s Mr. T, you know? That type of black guy. <laughs> Um, so I saw this guy in Muddy Waters the other day who pissed me off. Um, he he was reading and first, okay, don't judge me. <laughs> I, I hate books. No, like what well, kind of? But um, it wasn't the fact that he was reading. It was the fact that he went to Muddy Waters to read. Why go to Muddy Waters to read? That is a noisy environment. That is not conducive to reading. You need to focus on your book. The only reason you'd go to Muddy Waters to read is so you'd to have people think you're cool. And that's, you're, you're, you're an asshole at that point. I, I hate you for that. Because, and this kid, the thing that really got me about this kid is that he wasn't even like reading his book. He was like looking around. And then went back to the book, like, obviously you're getting distracted, just go home and read the book, you know? And he, he was moving his lips too. So he can't read good, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> or read well, however the sense goes. <laughs> Just go home and read, kid. Um, so I like girls. Um, especially hot girls. Uh, girl, hot girls, they, it, it sucks because they can do things that even a hot guy can't do. Like, at all. Like, even a hot guy still has to be interesting. You know? Like, uh, like, <laughs> that one's for you, sir. Uh, even a hot guy has to be interesting, you know? It has to, like, try with his stories. Uh, a hot girl can tell you about her cat for, like, 20 minutes, and a guy will be like, oh, we're... <laughs> so, on the third surgery, what happened? <laughs> like, I care. Um, I'll give you an example of this, the hot guy versus hot girl. I'm not saying that I'm hot or anything, but there's this girl at work who, uh, uh, I was telling a story to her one time, and uh, I like stories. And she just uh, said I tell bad stories. So I was like, all right, this next time I'm going to talk to her, I'm going to have a real good story for her. I'm going to be ready for it. I'm going to be playing this thing. It's going to be like Tarantino shit, you know? I'm going to start in the middle and mess with it, right? And so, <laughs> the next time I see her, the next time I see her, I start telling a story, and she just walks away. Just walks right, right through with my story. I'm like, come on, you sat through Inception, all right? And that shit was confusing as hell, all right? Hell, and Glorious Batches was in French for the first 20 minutes of the movie. Can't you let me tell a story? 
I wrote that differently, and I forgot how I did it, so I apologize, guys. But another thing that girls can, a hot girl can do that a hot guy can't. I was at a party the other day, right? And uh, I'm having fun, you know, uh, talking to people, making them laugh, and all this stuff. And uh, this hot girl comes up to me, and she goes, "Oh, you're funny. We're, you're, you're cool. We're friends now." And just grabs me by my hand and starts leading me outside. We're gonna go smoke a cigarette. Which I wasn't, I wasn't mad at that, you know. I go, I go to parties to talk to hot girls. She was a hot girl. I am fulfilling my obligations for the evening. But the thing that made me mad is that I couldn't do that. I can't be at the back of the party just like walking around. <laughs> no, this one has bad teeth. Nope, not for me. No, nah, this one has, uh, she's, this one, uh, can't run that fast. Nope, she's very, very weak. She's very weak. That one looks sick. Oh, that one. Yes, you're mine. Come here. Come on, girl. <laughs> Wanna hear a joke? Hold on a second. Let me put my brand on you. There you go. You're mine now. You're claimed. Um, <laughs> I wish I could do that. I wouldn't even go up to talk to the girl, honestly, because I'm an awkward kid. I'm a loser. I'm not a loser, but I'm an awkward kid. And, um, like, I don't know how social interactions go a lot. Like I don't know. I've never, I've never had, I've never walked away from a social interaction and thought, man, that went perfect. <laughs> that has never happened to me in life. And I'll give you an example of this. Uh, this one time I was, uh, you, you see, it was one time I was talking to a girl. I was talking to my friend about a girl I like, and we're walking down a hallway at school, and I'm talking about her, and this hallway comes to an L as well. So like, there's a hallway meeting, and there's like a 90 degree turn, and the. Uh, Funny, the girl I'm talking about actually is walking down this hallway. And I don't know what she was talking about, but whatever it was, it was funny as hell. Because her mouth was wide open. Now flashback to me. I'm getting over a cold at this time. Don't get ahead of me. Yeah. Um, exactly what you think happened, happened. I sneezed directly into her mouth. And... I, I, I wanna I wanna leave you guys with a question. Um, what do you say <laughs> to that? What is the proper way to get out of that situation? What do you what do you need to do? What's the what what, what would you say, sir? You don't know. Me either. Um, <laughs> give me another example. Uh, this one time, actually, yeah, I'll give you one example. Actually, I'm gonna talk about this one the last thing. Um, so. Uh, yeah, everybody's old enough. Um, I heard this, I, I'm kind of also scared to meet, like, meet girls, because like, you never know what, who you're going to get, you know? Like, my, like, they could be crazy, they could be insane, you don't know. They're, that's another person you're letting into your life. I was overheard this story from my one friend told me that uh, his friend actually hooked up with a girl who uh, had a really weird fetish, which, that's dangerous territory right there. Any fetish is not a good fetish, really. There's never a normal fetish, like, I like boobs. There's never, I like naked women, that is my fetish. There's never, you're never gonna hear that, you know? It's always like, I like clowns and, 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 and uh, magic and costumes. But uh, this girl had a weird fetish. She liked to be drooled on. How do you, how does that happen? How do you first, how do you discover that that is the way that you like sex? How do you discover that that's the way, was your first time under a leaky faucet or something like that? It's like, oh, this is the way it should always be. I love this. It's like a big wet shaggy doll coming to the room and just, oh, I love this. And if you have this fetish, how do you talk to your, pro how do you sit down with somebody and be like, honey, um, I know you do your best, I know you do your best in bed, but, uh, I don't think you spit on me enough. You don't, you don't, there, there could be more saliva in the bedroom, really, okay? Anyway, I'm Mike Thomas.